We are dividing cold bulked baguette dough. We're gonna pre-shape these and then shape them for real. And then these will be baked off tomorrow for market. Emerald, the dough's feeling pretty good. It was odd, the first, the first bin was a little small, but it didn't say by hand. But I imagine it was just a little less gassy than the rest. Muffins doing okay? A little bit of table flour. They're very cold. So they don't really want to be stretched out a whole lot. I'm gonna do one and see how it goes. But my guess is that I'll have to wait just a little bit. So making little mini loaves. I'm just gonna let them rest. I'm building up a little tension. I'm building up the tension little by little. If I do too much too fast, I won't like that very much. The surface tension won't be able to handle it. It'll look not very pretty. Did a batch a couple of weeks ago that that happened for a number of reasons and it was a very sad day. These feel pretty great. I think we reduced the hydration a little bit. It's interesting to be constantly learning new things with the same flour and the same processes. The dough is very cold. And if we try to shape them into baguettes right now, they'll just tear like crazy uh, because it's like, it's like having cold muscles. You have to kind of warm them up a little bit. And my goal is not really to warm them up, but just to very gently stretch the uh, protein strands into a baguette shape. So this like little mini log gets us uh, about a, a half, the, half the way there, I guess. But this also helps them stay uniform because coming out of the divider, the shape of the divider is, um, well, I can show you what that looks like. All the pieces are the same weight, but um, different shapes. This is a little messy, but I have more baguettes later. And so it looks like these should be larger, but they're all the same uh, dimensions. Uh, but when they come out on the table, obviously they don't look uniform. And we like our baguettes to look, well, uniform. Yeah, so even now, as I'm kind of pulling on the dough, I'm feeling it not really wanting to do what I want it to when it's maybe a few degrees cool, uh, warmer. So I'll keep going because I've got a lot of them. And by the time I get to that end of the bench, I'm sure they will be just fine. I'm actually doing this now because I'm waiting for my butter to warm up for lamination. It's about, oh, maybe 40 degrees right now and not really not really appropriate to put through the sheeter. It'll just fracture like crazy. Yeah, it, it, it just really doesn't want to... I say cooperate, but I feel like, I feel like it's got a you know, mind of its own too. It's like, I, don't, I shouldn't have to just force you to bend to my will. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you rest for a bit. It's all right, we're in no rush. It's exciting to have a lot of new people new faces in the bakery so that I feel like I can take my time here. Otherwise, I think I'd be a lot more stressed about this. I think I think fighting the dough is a losing battle because, well, the, the bread will lose because it won't look like how you want it to look. And then you will lose because you will just be frustrated. And, um, and then nobody's having a good time. I mean, it's still gonna taste good, maybe. I don't know, I had a penne chocolate yesterday that was particularly beautiful and it did taste maybe better than a normal one. Or not, sorry, not a normal one. Uh, I think I think the aesthetic, that's more than just the aesthetic. It, it does, you know, you, you eat with your eyes and the texture is also a big part of it. So I guess if, if for example, if the crumb is no good, then, you know, the flavor may actually be compromised. I don't actually know the science behind it, but definitely for the pastry, if um, if the lamination goes well and you have a good structure inside, then you get like the air um, 
actually, uh, like in wine tasting, uh, when you like swirl the glass and you, you know, you introduce oxygen into the fluid, I, I think it does make a difference in the end result in on your palate. I guess that's why denser breads taste different from breads with more open crumb. Not just because of the flowers that are being used, but also because of the, the whole uh, mouthfeel, which is a term that I don't love, but it exists, so I guess we should use it. Uh, right now, uh, I am cutting up some baguettes in half and adding them to other pre-portioned baguettes of our standard size to make our big baguettes. Uh, just recently, we've started making a few larger sized baguettes that seem to be going over well when we have the bakery open. Um, I also prefer the larger baguettes. It's a uh, we started doing those these uh, right before the French loaves, right? Oh uh, yeah, just kind of on a whim. Yeah, so just a heftier baguette. I quite enjoy them. Yeah, so the pre-shaping, the dough is quite cold, um, and uh, we definitely tried a little while ago to do some final shaping, and it was still not quite where we wanted it to be. So there was substantial tearing on the exterior, and it just, it was fighting back, you know? So we let it rest a little longer, now they are in excellent shape. This one's not. Is there another <laughs> bench knife? Oh, uh, you can have this one. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, it looks like I'm rolling it just back and forth, but I'm also using my fingers on the surface of the table to kind of pinch the seam at the bottom as I am trying to keep the diameter of the loaf consistent from end to end, and then tapering the ends to a point you can see the seam on the bottom where the dough is coming together. It's kind of like when you make I don't know, pot stickers or some kind of bun where you're actively pinching the dough together. Uh, except you can't really do that to make a baguette. And you could, but it'd be really tedious and not very effective, probably. <laughs> so I'm trying to just make a tube of dough, essentially. I think this is probably one of my favorite uh, loaves to shape. I think because it's just this back and forth motion and I'm not having to rotate the dough at all or do any sort of fancy business. Yeah, the sourdough loaves are more like we don't even have to think about it. Yeah, and we're just kind of freewheeling. I think with the baguettes you have to be a lot more particular about the shaping because you don't have the Benetton to give you the final form. Uh, I guess I'm not saying that... Table flour? Uh, Thank you. I'm not saying that the the regular loaves, the batard, are necessarily easier. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. But you do have the help. Yes, you just have to be more mindful of the baguettes. I, I, th I find it... Maybe more rewarding oh, yeah. to, to do baguettes right uh, from from mixing all the way to the oven. Uh, the mixing actually is a lot easier than most of the other doughs because these get one fold during their bulk right out of the mixer and then they go straight into the fridge and they're cold bulk the rest of the time. That's something that we developed pretty recently in here uh, as part of our workflow. Yeah, they're, they're deceptively simple from the outside, but I think because of that, um, it's really easy to tell when something has gone wrong 